You know you can't wear those. I'm a candidate that people are going to want to elect, Laura. I am not going to let you ruin my chances at being the most powerful person in the world. I'm running for president, Laura. Me, George W. Bush, governor of Texas. Please take them off. I can't see without them. Will you please give me a nice cold Dr. Pepper? Man, it's hot in here. Ugh, I'm not even gonna wear this. My back is so sweaty. It's probably because of global warming. That's good. That's real good. My lips are chapped too. Drier than a Tennessee raisin. Does anyone have a fudging blistex? All we have is chapstick. Do we have time to make a run to Walgreens? No, the debate starts at 7. Fine, give it to me. Purse your lips together. You're good, Mr. Vice President. George Bush, at last, will finally debate for the one son. It's time to meet your fate. Before you say another word, you fool, before you claim to have made the web again, you may be strong with the systems on my side. These people came to see the issues discussed. Not your sweaty backstains on the stage. Your Medicare lockbox is an outrage. My tax relief shall bring new wealth. My tax relief. Is this Texan mad? The 1% have plagued us all. The workers here demand some change. The poor working class. Slander my name if you must change. There's a duty that I'm sworn to do. Change. You, you know nothing of my life. Our one. allies will be stopped. My duties to the poor seek equal Q. rights. You a fail at that son, no 41. As I am so much shall spin more than my father's Global son. warming slows us down. The Damn, old shit needs so help to die. There's a siege in the Middle East. Medicare praise on the weak. My race has shall just be begun. You know nothing of Al Gore. I was born in Tennessee. I'm a classic Democrat. I'll win the presidency. Good evening from the Clark Athletic Center at the University of Massachusetts in Boston. I'm Jim Lehrer of the NewsHour on PBS, and I welcome you to the first of three 90-minute debates between the Democratic candidate for president, Vice President Al Gore, and the Republican candidate, Governor George W. Bush of Texas. And now the first question, as determined by a flip of a coin, it goes to Vice President Gore. How would you contrast your approach to preventing future, future oil price and supply problems like we have now to the approach of Governor Bush? Firstly, compadre, let it be known that it is a huge priority of this campaign to ensure that we restore the rights of your alienated people. We will not rest until we see votes for every man, woman, and child in this nation we call great. These last eight years have seen a huge amount of prosperity. Ever since good old 42 stepped into office, crime rates have fallen to all-time lows and the economy is booming. And of course, Mr. Clinton will leave the most satisfied president in the history of these United States. To answer your question about the budget, however, ah, dang it, I did it again. Dang it. 
English, one minute. Vice President Gore's plan is too simple to work effectively. As governor, I am chief financial officer of my state. You want numbers? I'll give you numbers. The first number is the 50% we will be spending on Social Security. The next number is my own, 10808-3280. Next, we will be spending one quarter on important projects. And finally, we will be giving the last 32% back to the people as a tax cut. You have questioned whether Vice President Gore has demonstrated the leadership qualities necessary to be President of the United States. What, what I said was this quote by me. They ran eight years ago saying they were going to be giving prescription drugs to the elderly. They ran again four years ago saying they were going to give prescription drugs to the elderly. Now we're seeing Al Gore here run again saying he is going to give prescription drugs to the elderly. I said it then, that was a direct quote by me, George Bush. And it's still true today. What Vice President Gore is doing is trying to spend money on an HMO that's just going to increase taxes. That's not what I want, and it's surely not what the American people want. There's a man in the audience today by the name of James McAvoy, who is 77 years old. He has high blood pressure and cholesterol, corroded arteries from poor dental hygiene, and frequent heart palpitations. He has three kidneys, all of which are failing. His big toe is too small, and his small toe is incredibly over -thighed. He is fat, ugly, and an alcoholic. He doesn't have a personality or anything that would allow him to succeed at such an archaic and saggy age. But he doesn't have access to the prescription drugs he needs to live a happy and content life. Now, if the American people were at all confused by Vice President Gore's statement, you're not alone. You're not alone here. If it has not been made clear to you yet, I'm the governor of the great state of Texas, which is as big if not bigger than the United States as a whole. So, you tell me who's more qualified. Thank you, Governor Bush, Vice President Gore. See you next week. And for now, from Boston, I'm Jim Lehrer. Thank you and good night. Dear Diary, I'm glad the election will be held on this day, only ten years after the first woman president was elected in Ireland. If I had it my way, everyone would be a woman, like my good friend and soon-to-be senator Hillary Clinton. She will be a great congresswoman if she can ever learn to get off her electronic mail account. She wouldn't even have that if it weren't for me inventing the World Wide Internet. Love, Allie. Dear Diary, today will go down in history as the most lopsided presidential election ever when I unanimously win every state. And to think that today the largest LSD lab in the history of mankind was found in the middle of Wamigo, Kansas. It's good to be me. It's good to be here in Dallas the greatest city in this nation because every city is the greatest city in this nation especially Wamigo, Kansas Love, George W. Bush the governor of Texas So first, in Florida, in the presidential race in Florida we simply believe it is too close to call big prize tonight, Florida, 25 electoral votes too close to call, not an enormous surprise to political analysts as of now in New Hampshire, we believe it is still too close to call for electoral votes. New Hampshire always has its enormous impact on presidential politics. In Georgia, in the presidential race, we believe it is too close to call. Thirteen electoral votes there at stake tonight. Remember, this is all about getting 270 electoral votes however you can. 
and in Georgia we now say its 13 electoral votes are still too close to call. In the presidential race in Virginia, with its 13 electoral votes, we believe it is too close to call. Virginia strongly Republican in presidential elections. Bush v. Gore, the courts are acting without precedent to see who will be our next president. A race that is too tight to call, the judges will decide it all. Bush v. Gore, O'Connor, I depend on you. Some coaxing isn't much to bother. Bush v. Gore. A Bush once lost in 92. But now I shall avenge my father. Bush v. Gore all on my own. Can we pull this victory off? With him endlessly campaigning. Thomas and Scalia too. Seven two. Just a shell of dub, you now. Bush B. Gore shall lead us on. Do I plead my case on him? To realities of freedom. Do I join my brother there? And the day my brother's born. Do I really even care? Will you celebrate with me? The time is now, the case is here. Bush v. Gore. Bush v. Gore is pure corruption. It shall menace nevermore. We'll award the proper victors. They are Lieberman and Gore. Gore. Watch them fight it out. Battle night and day. Gore can win it with the greenies in the way. He's dealing all his votes. Make the little push. Alienate the, the liberals so it goes to Bush. One will surely come out in. We the flag of freedom hard. What is a hanging child? And not just as some men saw, Bush v. Gore is pure corruption, it shall twist never more, we'll award the proper victor. But today is the judgment day, we're waiting to discover what our God in heaven has in store. For the war, for the war.